Hi guys, I'm Lori Ballin, and in today's video, we're going to learn how to search engine optimize a blog post. So what I'm going to show you today is top to bottom best practices in how you would apply on page SEO, which stands for search engine optimization techniques that will help you rank on the search engine. What you first must know is that every website is going to be different. How it ranks is going to depend on many, many factors. You know, how trusted is that website? How authoritative is that website? Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. If two people create a great blog post and they both do, uh, and they're unique content, and they both do all of the best strategies, one might still blow away the other ones on rankings because they've been around for a while and they have trust and they have authority in the search engine visibility. Okay, so that's something you have to know. Once you have some search engine visibility with Google, when you do create an amazing blog post and you nail it, you dive in deep to that topic and you follow all these best practices, there's a good chance that you'll be ranking on page one of the search engines really quickly actually. I'm not going to give you an, an exact time frame, but it can be pretty quickly if, you, if you're in the eyes of Google as the trusted and authoritative source on that topic, okay? So I'm going to go through top to bottom and show you these in other videos and in my Balan Method training, thebalanmethod.com. I show you how to do the blog research, how to find topics, um, how to create a 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 word blog post without knowing what's right in the first place. I break that all down for you. I show you how to hire content writers and how to get some get this content written for you. So there's a, a lot on it. Today I want to focus on all of the optimization techniques that we're going to apply, the on-page SEO we call this, okay? So I've got my blog post open here and I'm using WordPress. And what I'm going to show you how to do is first start with the title. Okay, and by the way, in the body of this video, um, once I get it posted, there is going to be a URL for you here that um, gives you the ability to go online and download my checklist for the perfect optimized blog post. And, and you're going to be able to actually check off all those boxes to make sure you went through it top to bottom correctly. Okay, so the first thing we have up here is our title. So your title is important because you want to make sure it's not too long and you want to make sure it appeals to the audience and that it covers the topic that you're covering and best practice that it includes the keyword that you are targeting. Okay. So for today's example, let's say um, how to raise your credit score is going to be our blog post. So we're going to type in here how to raise your credit score. Okay. Now, if you have a long title, best practice says put your keyword phrase towards the front. Okay. My keyword phrase is exactly that, how to raise your credit score. We're going to use that exact long tail keyword phrase that we are targeting. So we're not really targeting credit score. That would just be way too competitive. And raise your credit score, credit score could also be a, a keyword in there. We're focusing on that long tail, how to raise your credit score. Okay, might even do how to raise your credit score fast. Okay, even even better. All right. Now the next thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to check our URL slug. Now what happens here is you have a permalink, and your main domain is covered here. So see where it says BallenVegas.com. This is my Las Vegas real estate website. So BallenVegas.com. After that slash is everything. That's the slug. Everything after the slash is the slug. Now it is a best practice to have that be short. Three words is fantastic if you can get it down to three words. You Three, four, five words, okay? Um, three, if, if it makes sense to do so, is fantastic. Shorter is better, not for better rankings necessarily, but we have noticed that a great URL that is easy to read, that contains the keyword, is more appealing to the user when it pops up on the search engines. And so they're more likely to click it, which then increases your click-through rate. So more people that see the ad click on it, which is a benefit to you. So we want that usability of that URL to be good, all right? So we keep that short. And in my case, we'll go ahead and do, um, let's do raise credit score works perfectly fine. And that URL is the identifying address of the page that we're building. Oops. 
let's go ahead and leave fast in there because I already have raise credit score. Already got that in there, so we'll we'll go ahead and do it this way. Um, it adds a little number if you've already if it if you've already got a URL with that name on it. So we don't ever want that. We don't want two pages of the same content anyway. All right, but for for my example today, we're gonna go ahead and use this one. Now the next thing you want to do on your blog post is you want to create an intro. Okay. Now on your intro, I'm gonna suggest that we have you know about 150 to 200 words maybe. That don't don't hold that to a science. There's nothing that says that having a hundred or two hundred words on an intro is going to help you rank any better. I'm kind of giving you the overall, not just how to rank on the search engines, but also how to create a great experience for the consumer. So we want to have an intro. Okay. Now in your intro, you don't want it to be longer than two hundred words before we're going to get to the next component, because what will happen is, especially on a mobile device. If you have more than 200 words, it gets very chunky, the text does, and that's not a good user experience. We want to break that up. So sometimes when I'm saying like 150 or 200 words or I'm giving you a word count, it's because we want to make sure that how we're breaking up that blog post with video and internal links and quotes and statistics and all the things I'm going to show you how to do today are increasing that user experience, okay? So we're going to put an intro there. In your intro, it's a good idea to include your keyword in that first couple hundred words. What we're not going to do is stuff that keyword in anywhere else where it's not natural. If you say the keyword multiple times, that's okay as long as it's natural and makes sense to do so, but you would never, ever, ever want to stuff those in. We used to do that way back in the, you know, I won't, I won't date myself, but let's just say it's old school SEO where we used to have to put in the keyword so many times to tell Google what that page was about. But Google now reads topic and intent and context. So we no longer have to do that. All right. And so, but we do want to kind of have it towards the top is best practice. Now we want to have an H1 tag. This is a heading tag. It's a, it's, it's showing the most important thing on the page. And again, how much these heading tags play into today's SEO, we know that they're par part of the ranking factor, but they probably only have a small relevance, yet they're still a best practice. And they do help the page get broken up. They increase user experience. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Up here, your title will typically carry down into your blog post, and that will be your H1 tag. And on WordPress, it's done for you automatically, but it would look like this. How to raise, how to raise your credit score fast. So what we do is we highlight that, and then we just drop formats, I mean paragraph down. See that little button there, it says paragraph? and choose heading one, and it makes your heading the largest and boldest thing on the page, okay? Now, you don't need to do that if you're using WordPress. It's going to be done, taken care of for you, most likely. You'll just have to take a look at your blog post and look at that. You never want more than one H1 tag on the page, and that's generally the main topic, which is the title, okay? So after we do our little intro here, what we're going to do now is we're going to create our paragraphs and we're going to have some H2 headings, okay? And these might be things like um, how to increase your score after bankruptcy, okay? Um, raising your, let's do improving. So I'm trying not to repeat the same words over and over again. Improving your credit score through, oh, let's do this one. I, you know, I pulled the, all these up the other day. I know what they all are, but um, credit cards that can help improve your credit. So we're not going to use the word credit score in that one, okay? Um, the next one could be, um, What credit score? Let's do improving your credit to buy a house. Okay, so let's just look at those for example. Now, what will happen is each one of these, okay, I feel like I'm spelling bankruptcy wrong. Hold on. 
No? I don't know why that looks odd. Doesn't that look odd? Okay, that's just one of those words today that's catching me off as I'm looking at it. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and, okay, I know the answer to this. After a foreclosure, because that will continue, continue to bother me through the video. So all we do is highlight this and we change it to a heading two tag. See that? And then everything under that will be normal text. And this paragraph might be, let's just say we're doing 10 paragraphs. So that one might be 300 words. We're doing a 3000 word blog post. We have 10 paragraph headings and each one's going to be 300 words. Okay. Then the next one, we'll make this an H2. There we go. H2. And under that text, 300 words. Next one, H2. Get the idea, the idea, text, 300 words. Okay. Now, what I like to do is optimize each individual paragraph and I take them one by one by one. Okay. So the first thing in optimizing a paragraph is having that H2 title tag, which we've already done. Now, let me go ahead and click on preview so I can show you what this looks like as we're moving through this. Okay. So we have our intro, 150 to 200 words. One of the things I was going to show you, but I'll go ahead and show you now since it popped up here. I like my blog post to have a table of contents. If you're going to have a lot of paragraphs, it's a better user experience for the consumer, the visitor that's on your website, to be able to click through to any one of these items and shoot down the page and get to right where they want to go. So the table of contents increases user experience. An advanced tip, a pro tip for those of you professional bloggers out there, uh, is that the table of contents, if you're using schema markup and you're focusing on marking up structured data, that table of contents is structured data. And if you have that done and your blog post ranks high on the search engines, we find that that table of co contents turns into site links at the bottom of your blog post. Let me show you. So if I were to type in um, Southwest Las Vegas zip codes, and I scroll down here, here's my blog. This is my website right here, my Vegas website. And you see these little site extensions down at the bottom here? This is not a paid ad. Those are earned in organic listings. I'll show you the page. What you'll see is those were formed directly from this table of contents. Here's the table of contents. See how I've got these? And, and the table of contents, you can actually move around depending on what plugin you're using and where you want to put those. For those of, for those of you that are using WordPress, um, you can, if you have one of my websites, I, I own a marketing company and we put in the table of contents uh, structure for you already. But if you don't, check out table of contents plus, table of contents plus. And what you do is you go into the settings and you say, okay, I want the table of contents to show up under the first heading tag or above it. I want it to be wide or I want it to be narrow. I want it to be this color or I want it to be the color of my theme. I want it to have to include only H2 tags or also include H3, H4, that type of thing. My structure, it, it's, um, it's, a, um, it's after the first heading tag and it matches my theme and it's only H2 tags. Only H2 tags. Okay. But that's just my preference. You can do it however you want to do it. You can play with it. Okay. So that's how we create this table of contents right here. Now, the next thing I want to do is once I have all of this text in here, I want to start off before I get to that text and I want to include either an image, a video, a quote, a statistic, a graph, um, could be an embedded item like a Facebook post, a Yelp review, anything like that that applies. So we're going to be bringing in some other types of multimedia that will attract the consumer. So for example, our first blog, our first paragraph here is how to incre increase your credit score after foreclosure. All right, watch this. We go over to YouTube and we type in how to improve your credit score after a foreclosure. 
Now let's see if anybody else has already done this video. Okay, they have. Now, I don't want to put in a competitor that's in the same local market as me because they're going to get some promo. In something like this, I'm going to look for somebody that does credit restoration, possibly a news channel, something like that. Okay, and I see a lot of them here. Okay, here's a great one. This is a legal firm. Seven steps to a 720 credit score even after filing bankruptcy. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and play it. Look at associates and other bankruptcy firms. Is That's the ad. Let's skip the ad. If your credit score has dropped below 720, then you need to learn the seven steps to a 720 credit score as it could be a sign of financial distress. Okay. By the way, she just nailed the title of what your, what your title of your blog post could be. Seven steps to a 720 credit score. In fact, I almost want to. I'm not going to publish this right now anyway, but this could be seven steps to raise your credit score fast. Now, I would pick this based on the, the, the keyword research I do in, in advance, but I love that title. And I might also have a different blog title than my search engine title tag, which I'll show you how to do in a couple minutes. So this is great because this is going to share on social media. We know that numbers increase the click through rate. Um, so I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to use that seven steps to raise your credit score fast. Okay. Could be five steps. Oh, you know what? In our case, didn't we say there's going to be 10 anyway? Let's do nine. I like odd numbers. Let's do nine with 300 words. We're doing a 27 or 700 word blog post. Okay. And so here, um, on this video, what you do now is you go down to share. And if that user has given permission to embed the video, you can use the video on your blog post. If they have not given permission, this little embed code will be faded out and it'll say that they, they, this user has not given permission to embed. And what happens is when people upload their videos to YouTube, there is a little checkbox that says allow people to embed or not. And usually it's advantageous to them to allow it because they get more views on that Facebook video. They, they might get more engagement on, I mean, on that uh, YouTube video, which could increase their rankings and increases brand exposure. So for the most part, it's smart to allow that embed. But there are times when you don't want to do it. We'll talk about that on, on another video. So I'm going to go ahead and click embed and see what happens is you get this little iframe code that pops up here. I'm going to uncheck show suggested videos at the end and uncheck show video title, but I'm going to go ahead and leave in the player control options. And I'm just going to copy this video and I'm going to go over here. And now wherever I want my video, I'm going to place it, but it can be very confusing when you first do this. So let me show you. You go over to this little text tab because we need to put this in as code. If you can spot where you want to put that video, go ahead and paste it in. Don't worry about where you put it because you're going to be able to cut it and paste it anywhere you want once we get back to the visual editor. Okay, the what you see is what you get editor, the WYSIWYG we call that. You'll be able to cut and paste. Okay, um, and so you can change how you want the width to be or the height to be on your video or you can do this little hack here and you can just say um, width equals 100 percent okay now let's preview that to make sure that that's coming out correctly all right perfect now again if you have um, one of my websites that I build from balanbrands.com you're going to have um, a content block that allows you to embed a video that will resize for you. Okay, we already have that in our showcase pages and now it's going to be rolling out on all, on all the blog posts um, and, and regular pages as well. So that makes it a little bit easier. But that little hack is convenient there for you if you want to make sure that that video is the correct size and you don't know what size to make it. Just get rid of width and height and put in height equals 100% and it'll size it for you automatically to the correct size. Okay. Next, I want to go ahead and put in my words of text, okay? So we'll put something in here that says something like, what are we on? How to increase your credit score. Okay, um, experiencing foreclosure is tough for any homeowner. Well, nobody wants to go through that 
it does happen to the best of people. Your credit score was likely wiped out and now you need to know how to increase it again. So, okay, we'll just do something like that. Now, don't worry about that not being the best writing. I can't write and talk and make a video at the exact same time, but I wanted to show you this example, okay? Um, what the next thing I do is I make sure that I include a couple links in my paragraphs. One of those links is going to be in, um, an internal link within my own website. So I'm going to link to another page on my website if it's appropriate and will increase the user experience. So for example, this is nine steps to raise your credit score fast. Um, let's see, experiencing foreclosure is tough for any homeowner. Well, nobody wants to go through that. It does happen to the best of people. Um, this is often the next step if a short sale was not accepted. Okay, I'm putting that in for an example. So I've got another article on this website, I know I do, about short sales, okay? Um, there was a time in Las Vegas when short sales were 97% of our business, so I have a lot on short sales. But let's just say I want to, maybe this person is actually in foreclosure and they're already wondering how they're going to raise their credit score. But a short sale might actually be a better option for them, they don't know it. So here, I might put uh, this is often the next step. Let's just do if if a short sale was not accepted. And then I'm going to click that little link there and I'm going to type in short sale. And I might have a blog post called what to do if your short sale was not accepted. That would be ideal. But I don't have that and I just have how does I have how does a short sale work in Las Vegas? And in my case that's a, a long form content blog. It's very in depth. They'll probably get their question answered there. And then I'm just going to click this little apply button and see there now this link is live. So let's go ahead and um, preview the page so you can see that again. And this also helps Google with understanding your page flow and which page is relevant to another page. So this is a strong um, SEO practice is to increase the, is to do those links. Okay, so typically, whatever your theme is, your link will be a certain color or a certain style to match your theme, or it just might be blue and underlined. Okay, so here's where you can see I put that link. Now, old school SEO told us, make sure that that underlined keyword is an exact match to the keyword you want to rank for, for the landing page you're sending them to. So in the old days, I would have only highlighted short sale. I want to rank for short sale. I want that page I'm sending them to to rank for short sale, so I'm only going to highlight short sale. Today, that's not advised. Those kind of exact match keyword anchors, that anchor text now, we want it to be kind of the phrase around it, okay, or similar words even. So we've got our internal link in there. Now, what you might also want to do somewhere in your blog, you want to have links that go outbound off of your website to another source, okay? So let's say um, somebody did a report. Oh, this is a great example. Um, in a report done by, let's just say, automatedbanking.com, um, short sales and foreclosures, um, a short sale, is less damaging to your credit than a foreclosure, okay? Now what I would do is I would select this uh, report done by automated banking and I'm gonna, I'm going to include a link to, let me just pretend over here, I'm just gonna grab this link, pretend that's the automated banking link. And I'm going to do this automated bank report done by automated banking. I'm going to click the internal link. I'm going to paste it in there just like that. And I'm going to click on this little gadget to open the link options. And I'm going to say open in a new tab. 
That way, the person never leaves my website. It doesn't have to leave my website or lose their place. It pops open in a new window or, or tab for them, okay? So that's, that's advised. Now, after you get this paragraph done, you want to have um, a, a, a break in those paragraphs. So remember, this is going to be a few hundred words. Right now, I've only got it like, that's probably like 40 words. So it'll be it'll be heftier than this, like like um, considerably considerably longer. Here you want to put a divider, okay? Now, uh, and, and that's optional. This is the divider is not an SEO um, is not an SEO ranking factor. It's there to improve the user experience. So I'm 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 trying to engage more with the user, get more clicks on the page get them staying on the page longer. And those are positive signals, these user metrics, again, whether or not they're directly used today in the ranking factor or indirectly um, used, they're, they're still very important today with rank brain and artificial intelligence and Google wanting to remain the search engine of choice. It wants to provide the best user experience. And so that, that's my obsession is how do we, how do we provide that? And it, remember, when it all comes back to mobile with making sure they, they're they going to stay a while and with all those scrolls that they have to do, we want to give them lots and lots of options within our content. And so, uh, again, if you have a website by Balan Brands, we have the little content block to drag in a divider, but this plugin called Short Codes Ultimate is also a fantastic option to do a divider. So I've already installed the plugin called Short Code Ultimate, and I'm going to go up here to, it's so funny, how many people watching this are really annoyed by this little round button because I need to update my plugins? I am, it drives me crazy, I should have updated it first. All right, um, the, normally I've got, we have automa automation that does our updates for us, so I think we're just off by the morning um, when I'm making the video, so it's gonna happen for me automatically. But I'll go down here and go ahead and, cl and click Insert Short Code, Divider. Now, once you do your divider and you pick what color you want that divider to be and any other styles, what you want it to say, which I'm going to show you, um, and you choose the style, dotted or dashed or double lined, what's going to happen is um, it will save that and it'll remember that. So I'm going to go ahead and click insert short code. So it puts this little piece of code right here. You don't have to worry about that, but let me show you what it does. We'll click preview and we'll take a look at what that divider does. See, it creates this little line, and when the user clicks it, they can go right back to the top. So you're gonna put one of those at the bottom of each paragraph to give them the ability to go back to where they came from. And you can make that dotted or dashed or double lined or different color or say something different. So I love using those on long form content. I think they look fantastic, okay? Um, so now you've, We've already talked about that's kind of the structure of each paragraph. Let me give you some more options of what else you can put in here. Okay, so here at the top one we did a video. So this one, let's do a quote. Okay, so I go over here and I'll type something in like financing quotes. All right, so brainy quote is a great one. Goodreads is another one. And let me find one that I like. Uh, that one's about the stock market. Your net worth to the world. No, let's see. Ha, huh, that's cute. All right, I'm going to do a, fun, a, a humorous one too. I'm going to highlight this one right here. And I'll go over and I will paste that in right there. Okay, um, I'm gonna get rid of the link, and um, and you can get these quotes from wherever. You could embed on Brainy Quote. You could put that whole image in there and give them credit and link back to their website. That's perfectly fine. You can leave that little link in there to give them credit. Um, in fact, like right here, if I wanted to leave that in there for them, I can put a little link here on William Feather, open in a new tab, and leave that link credit in there for them. Okay, so now what I can do is just click on this little quotes up here and it now shoots it over and makes it a quote and let me show you what that looks like. And Ult Short Code Ultimates also has a different style of, of quotes you can do. So you can mix those up. But let's take a look. 
See how that does that and shoots that over there and makes it makes it look different. That looks fantastic on mobile too. Okay. Now let's say you want to go down to the next one and this time we're going to include an image. So we're just going to go to add media, upload file, upload a, a picture that you like, either one you took or stock art free um, photo. Now let me show you really quick how to optimize this picture for SEO once it's in here. Okay. First of all, you can move the photo around. Put it wherever you want to put it, okay? And that'll change how if the text wraps around it or if it's going to be the full size, the full width, and you can mix that up as well, okay? Um, you can also drag and drop that and make it bigger, make it smaller. Now, if you click on this little pencil, what you'll notice here is a caption. So if you wanted to put a little caption here, um, sunny day, um, sunny days are great for apples and whatever nothing to do with finance, okay? Um, the alt text is going to be if somebody was visually impaired um, and they wanted to know what this picture was about, how would you describe it to them? So quite literally, this one would be um, person is sitting, sitting with a, a holiday beverage um, with cinnamon sticks and whole and sliced apples on the table. I'm describing that image. It would not make sense now to call this image how to raise your credit credit score. And that's what people are still doing. That's old school SEO. It's spammy and it's not a positive signal. Now, if how to raise your credit score by eating apples and drinking a holiday beverage made sense, fine. If it makes sense to use that. Now, I've got some workarounds on, a, on some of this stuff. Not workarounds, some optimization tips like, I'll put this picture into Canva, canva.com, which I have videos on that too. And I'll put a title on it. And the title will say how to raise your credit score. So then when I describe the image, I could say apples are sitting on the table. Of course, this would be relative to the blog, but apples are sitting on the table with cinnamon sticks and a holiday beverage. Banner reads how to raise your credit score. Now I'm not being spammy. I'm telling the real story, but obviously the banner should match the picture. So this is a bad example, pulling a non-finance picture up. You would have that finance picture up there, okay? And then if that link is going to click anywhere, if it's going to go anywhere on the image title attribute, we would put something like um, um, complete guide to accessing the credit score. So you're telling them what happens when they're clicking on that title, okay? And so you can move things around here. You can make a full size, a thumbnail. You can put a link in there, but just make sure um, that the most important thing is that your alternative text describes the image, that it's not just the same title over again. You don't want to repeat your title like that, okay? So that's how to do an image. Now, maybe on the next paragraph, you want to embed a Facebook post. So what you do is you go over to Facebook, and you go up here to the search engines, and you type in um, credit score. I didn't realize my computer wasn't plugged in. Okay, um, credit score increase. Let's take a look and see who's got stuff on, out there. All right. Oh, there's a guy at the video too. Um, so you might find something that, that looks like it. All right, client achieves amazing credit score increase of 272 points. I like that one. So let me click on that one. Let's just say this is the one we're going to use. Let me pause it. So what you do if you want to use this is go up here to this little dot, dot, dot and check if there's an embed option. Um, all right. In this particular case, it does not look like there's an embed option. Does he, do they have all theirs off? Let me see. You might have to click through to the page and find the post to actually access that. Okay. I don't know why that's taking so long. Okay. Let's find one. Da, 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 da. Okay. Let's just say this one. Let me check if it's there. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So in this this particular case, you have to click through to the business page, find the post, and then embed it. It just wasn't letting us embed it in that little preview. So we go up to this right hand. We click embed. We grab that iframe code, just like we did with the YouTube video. We go back and we click text, find where you want it, paste it. Now, remember what I said. You can move these around by dragging and dropping. So if I don't like where that video is, I'm going to cutting and pasting. I'm going to cut that video, just do your cut shortcut, and I'll paste it wherever I want it. Paste. So it doesn't matter where you put it in that text. You can move it around once you're in the WYSIWYG editor. That's the way I usually suggest that my, um, that my bloggers do it so that if you don't know where how to make sense of what your code looks like. Okay. 
Um, another thing you might want to embed is a Yelp review or something like that. So we go over to Yelp. Let's just say we're talking about um, a particular finance company, credit score, solutions, debt relief services that works for me, near Bellevue, Washington. Fine, let's just go with it. Let's find a, um, a review here. Um, all right, let's just do Cobalt Credit Services. It has a bunch of reviews. Find a review you like. Okay, see you there. And uh, those are ads, sorry. Find it. There we go. Here's one. Five-star review. Hopefully it'll be more recent than 2015. Click over here on Embed Review and do the same thing we did with the Facebook post in the video. Copy it. We're going to come over here and we're going to embed it wherever we want to have it. And then you'll be able to see. Let me hit click on Preview. Get out of there. Okay, and then we have our Yelp review on the page, okay? Um, so remember, statistics, quotes, Facebook videos, Facebook posts, Yelp reviews, infographics, each paragraph, something different to break it up, okay? At the bottom, a short code, uh, at the bottom, a divider, and within the text, an internal link and an external link. Um, make sure that your blog post is in a category that it makes sense to be in. So if you're a real estate agent and this is a blog for you as a real estate agent, you might have a category called how to buy a house that this goes into, or maybe you have a credit score category or a financing category, okay? You might just have a blog category and they all go in there, but you'll, you'll wanna select a category. Tags, I don't worry about anymore unless you, they're just, they're just messy and spammy and not necessary, okay? You're gonna select a featured image on your blog post that matches your blog that is also optimized. Now down at the bottom, you have, um, if you've installed Yoast and you have Yoast or Yoast Premium, you're going to be able to in here to optimize your title. Now this title will not change the title we just did, but it will change it for the search engine results page. So remember we did nine steps to raise your credit score fast. That's fantastic. That works in here. But let's just say my credit, my keyword really was how to raise your credit score. I can change that here, okay? And then these little brackets also include, um, also increase click-through rate. So I might put step-by-step um, -step video guide or guide, what it, let's see what fits in there. Now, if I were to keep typing, it'll turn red. Well, heck, it should have turned red. <laughs> should turn red when you've gone too far because it wants to warn you if you're going over the suggested characters because it'll get cut off then on the search engines, okay? And then we've already got our slug, and then this little meta description is where you're gonna describe really short what this blog is about. Amazing guide to help you increase your credits, um, credit score quickly. Now I like to re I do like to have my keyword in my meta description. So um, this is for you if you want to know how to raise your credit score fast. Got it? Okay. I don't worry about the focus keyword and the green dots. Um, if you know your best practices, you don't have to worry about that. But if you are a beginner and you want to look, Yoast has these suggestions that tells you. Um, you know, where your keywords should go or internal links or outbound links that are best practices, okay? And, and, and they get better and better all the time with, with um, catching up with what today's SEO uh, wants versus several years ago. For a while there, it seemed a little old and outdated, but they've really come a long way. On the right-hand side, you've got something called cornerstone content. And if you've set this up with your Yoast, what happens is when you mark a main page on your website as cornerstone content, then Yoast is going to suggest on the right-hand side, we think you should include this article as well. So here, what credit score is needed to buy a house? They're suggesting I add that. So I might go back and look at my blog and go, okay, is there anything that makes sense? Credit score to buy a house. Oh, wait, here I'm talking about what credit score is needed 
to buy a house or if you're buying a house, how is your credit? I could actually highlight that, go up here and find my what credit score is needed. I'm kind of moving fast now because I wanted to end this right at the 30 minute mark. Um, and I can click apply. It's there. And now if you look at the right hand side, there's now a checkbox there instead of um, instead of the little uh, clipboard because I've now added it. All right. Um, so I think I've covered, I'm not going to do schema on this, um, on this video. If you have structured data, if this was a review, um, if, if, if there's certain things you could do to add a little schema markup, and I've got plugins for that, that'll help tell Google, this is the structured data on this page, and that could help you earn um, site links or, or featured rich snippets, uh, general rich snippets. You could earn that zero position in the top, but I've got other videos on how to add schema. So this is, these are your best practices, and um, uh, I may, I think I've covered it all. Who knows, I may have missed a step as I'm going through since I didn't actually hit the publish button. I would have caught it. So I'm gonna make sure that we get that checklist. It has everything in it printed for you, and you can click the link and download it. You'll be able to um, request it, receive it uh, by email, and then um, you'll be able to follow these best practices. And, and remember, today what we technically did is we optimized um, for the visitor that's on your website, therefore also optimizing for the search engines. If you need a real estate website, check out balanbrands.com. We do content, pay-per-click marketing. We build your real estate website, uh, all kinds of things over there. And um, if you have a real estate referral, my name is Lori Ballin with Lori Ballin team here in Las Vegas, ballinvegas.com. And I would absolutely love your referrals. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you want an at-home training system, check out theballinmethod.com. And um, thank you so much for being here today.